Uh, just tell us a little bit about the panel that you're going to be on uh, this weekend. Oh, okay, on Saturday at 4 we're going to be doing a Senate Rules and Filibuster Reform panel. Uh, it should be very interesting. We're going to have Senator Tom Udall from New Mexico is going to join us. Uh, and he and I have done, some, uh, done a panel like this before at uh, the America's Future Now conference back in June. Um, Tom Udall has uh, come out as you know, essentially has committed to really opening the door uh, procedurally for some rules changes at the beginning of the next Congress. So what he's doing is really going to be instrumental for any hope of making changes in the filibuster or any Senate rules. So it's great to have him here to talk about it. But we actually also have got just a really a good panel uh, selected that's really going to go in depth about not only the need for filibuster reform but the mechanics of how it can happen and what do we need to do procedurally. This is, I think it's going to be a real exciting panel for that. Yeah, can you give us any like sort of sneak preview? I mean, what, what do we have to do to make this happen? Well, the sneak preview, uh, that, that part I, I would probably cover. Procedurally, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's generally assumed that to make a rules change in the Senate you need a two-thirds vote. Uh, in fact, actually, and, and this is sort of a, a point worth making, you really, like anything, only need a majority vote to make a change in the rules. The problem arises in that, of course, rules changes like anything else can be filibustered. And when you filibuster a rules change, you actually need a two-thirds vote, which is even higher than the three-fifths that we're always stuck with, the 60-vote threshold. But, as it turns out, there's this sort of magic constitutional window that exists at the beginning of a new Congress and only at the beginning of a new Congress that enables you to sort of utilize the congressional prerogative to make your own procedural rules um, by majority vote. That's, that's something that's laid out in the Constitution and the way they reconcile the majority rulemaking power in the Constitution and the Senate's two-thirds rulemaking power is they say, well, at the beginning of a new Congress, we don't necessarily operate under Senate rules. It's sort of a general parliamentary rule and everything gets adopted by majority vote. This is something they've been over a couple of times in the past and Senator Udall wants to throw that door open again. So it's real arcane stuff, so we'll get a chance to really look in depth at it. It should be fun. I think it's fun. I'm the kind of person that thinks that's fun. <laughs> um, it's something I expect uh, you've heard a lot before and you'll probably have a question about it at the, the panel is uh, people would say, well, the Democrats are going to want the filibuster. Real quick, what would you say to that? Uh, I would say, uh, I'll start off by saying, you're right, there will come a day when the Democrats are going to want the filibuster, and that'll be when Republicans, if they ever take back the majority. The problem with it is that when the Republicans take back the majority, in all likelihood, that filibuster just won't be there for Democrats to use. They'll want it, all right. It, you'll, you'll be 100% right. Democrats will want it. It just will have been taken away by Republicans if, if we don't do it first. And I don't look at it in terms of, you know, taking it away from one side or another, but you know, restoring some majority rule to the body, I think that's kind of what it's what it's all about. But uh, yeah, for Democrats, if you're thinking about it in, in partisan terms, then you really need to think about the fact that you're going to want to take advantage of having made this change to make some gains legislatively before the day comes when you might be in the minority. Uh, because if you wait, thinking, well, one day we'll want it, that day will come, but it will have been taken from you by Republicans with no tactical advantage ever. You'll simply be the victim of the change instead of being able to take advantage of it. Okay. And the last question I'll ask is, what do you want people to come to this panel looking for? What do you want them to bring with them to this panel? Well, I'd like for people to come and have the question in mind, you know, how can this really happen? I, a lot of people have heard about this opportunity, this constitutional option, as they call it, uh, they're going to want to come and maybe find out exactly how it works mechanically and what they can do to urge their own senators to, to join in. Because although Tom Udall has committed to making the opportunity, it's still possible that he could be kind of left holding the bag if we don't get a majority of senators to back him up. So people are going to want to know, I hope, how they can get their senators on board what they need to do, what activities are there that they can jump on the bandwagon with to get their senators on board. And for people who head organizations in particular inside DC, uh, institutional advocacy groups like environmental groups and gay and lesbian rights groups and also anybody who's got 
an institutional agenda. I'd like to see them come to the realization that their agenda stalls without some sort of filibuster reform and to make that connection so that they know that advocating for their agenda means advocating for filibuster reform first. Okay, well, David Waltman, thank you very much for being our first official Never's Nation <laughs> 2010 interview. All right, thanks a lot.